Hello, my name is Carlos Bocanegra and I'll be presenting RF Go, which is a seamless self-checkout system for apparel stores using RFID. This work was conducted during an internship at NEC Laboratories America and is partially funded by the National Science Foundation. Current checkout systems are mainly based on barcodes. I'll begin my presentation by briefly overviewing the current barcoding technology, its limitations and alternatives. Next, I'll motivate the use of RFID as a technology for checkout and then I'll cover the challenges of using RFID for checkout process. I'll show some of the currently deployed RFID-based checkout systems and describe how they fall short to provide a desirable customer experience. Then I'll introduce our proposed RFGO system, describe its main components, and provide implementation details. Finally, I'll provide some results to show how our system leads to a fast, accurate, and seamless checkout process. Using barcode has been the default checkout technology, thanks to its longevity, universality, and low cost. Despite its widespread, it's far from providing a seamless checkout experience. The limitations are inherent to optical scanning, mainly the requirement for short proximity and line of sight between the reader and the item. The line of sight requirement forces customers to spend time finding the tags on each item. Scanning also requires an additional time and effort, since barcodes need perfect alignment with the scanner. Customers are also required to load and unload the items from their cards at the checkout station. This creates a physical barrier for customers of advanced age. The manual effort and alignment at scanning result in a slow checkout process and impacts on customer satisfaction. For example, studies have shown that only 23% of the customers are satisfied with the checkout and 13% of the customers switch stores seeking a faster and easier checkout process. Retailers are, have already started betting on new alternative technology. An example is the well-known Amazon Go, a store that uses a combination of cameras and sensors to track customers and items in real time. They, their system uses computer vision and deep learning algorithms and requires only a short facial, facial registration and scanning of a code at the entry of the store, allowing for an automatic checkout at the exit. Amazon, however, has acknowledged that some scenarios may be challenging, like confusing items that look alike for which the system may need to rely on the purchase history of the customer. In addition, the continuous monitoring by cameras throughout the store may be a concern for some customers and be perceived as an intrusion of their privacy. On the other hand, radio frequency identification, or in short RFID, is a technology that does not expose the customers to cameras and doesn't suffer from the product uncertainty. Here, every product is attached an RFID tag, but as opposed to barcode, it does not require line of sight with the reader to be scanned. As I'll show later, a seamless checkout system can be built based on RFID technology. Let us now discuss why an RFID-based checkout system could have a very short time to market and low-cost deployment. We're seeing that the use cases of RFID in retail are on the rise. For instance, in inventory management, out-of-stock item reduction, or tracking. Hence, more RFID tags are deployed for such purposes. Also, the cost of RFID tax is dropping to few cents, which allows for a widespread deployment. Governments are also embracing this technology. The Japan 2025 initiative is a good example, which plans to autom automate convenience stores with RFID. Some large apparel retailers, such as Macy's and Uniqlo, already use RFID tax in every product within the store, meaning RFID tax are already in place for such stores. There are some RFID-based checkout systems that provide a more convenient alternative to barcode. The most primitive form of scanning uses handheld devices, mainly employed for inventory tracking. The, to check out multiple items simultaneously, current systems restrict the checkout volumes. This shields and isolates the RF signals. Cage, slot, bin, and surface-based checkout stations are some, some examples. We sorted them in the figure by the shielding they provide for the checkout volume. This restriction, however, limits the checkout to only a few products. Also, these checkout systems still require a substantial interaction of the customer, such as loading and unloading the items. To tackle these shortcomings, we envision a seamless checkout framework using RFID, where customers check out products within what we define as the checkout area, or CA, while others form a line within the weight area, or WA. In this way, the system solely identify the items in such a dedicated area instead of continuously tracking them throughout the store. To provide a customer with a so long for checkout experience, we believe a checkout system must host the following features. There should be no need for manual intervention, either from a staff member or the customer. 
The checkout area has to be large enough to easily accommodate the customer and all his products. The checkout area also has to be unbarricaded, meaning no entry or exit door, which provides a more convenient and aesthetic design. And finally, the checkout should be fast and completed in a time comparable to of the time of payment. Let's revise the basics of RFID operations. In Gen2 passive RFID systems, a reader aims to retrieve the unique identifier, often referred to as electronic product code or EPC, from a passive tag. Communication between a reader and a tag has four phases, where in all four phases, the reader sends a carrier signal to energize the tag. In phase one, the reader modulates the carrier signal to perform a query using PIE modulation. When a tag wakes up and decodes the query, it responds with a 16-bit random number called RN16 using FM0 backscattering modulation in phase two. FM0 modulation waveform is shown on the bottom right corner of the slide. Upon decoding the RN16, the reader sends an acknowledgement packet containing this same RN16 in phase three. Then, only the tag whose RN16 matches the ACK sequence replies with its EPC in phase four. The medium access control in Gen2 standard allows a frame to have up to 16 slots, where the exact number is encoded in the query. The tag response, response in phase two is then modified to reply on only one of such slots at random. RFID communication, however, introduces some challenges to realize our vision for checkout. Oftentimes, tags become unreadable to the reader. We see that such tags lay in a blind spot. This can be originated due to a weak illumination from a reader, an unfavorable orientation with respect to the reader's antenna, or coupling originated by materials such as liquids, metals, or other tags. When multiple tags reply simultaneously, what we refer to as a collision, neither of the replies may be decodable. This reduces the reading rate. So, um, finally, there is no built-in localization mechanism for the tags, and thus we rely on signal attributes. The accuracy, however, is heavily affected by tag mobility, multipath fading, and mobility in the environment. We refer to this problem as position uncertainty. Here we present our proposed checkout system called RFGO, which conforms to our vision. RFGO is depicted on the left-hand side figure and is composed of three main components a physical structure that contains sidewalls, sensors, and antennas, a custom-built reader that coordinates the operations over the multiple antennas in a centralized fashion, and a tag classifier that assesses whether tags lie inside or, not, or outside the, the checkout area. Let's see how these components tackle their, these previous, uh, previously described challenges. The two sidewalls in RFGO delimitate the CA. These are placed sufficiently apart to accommodate a customer and a shopping basket or cart. Moreover, the structure has no physical boundaries at the entry or exit, which follows the vision of a large and unbarricaded checkout system. A bundle of infrared sensors assesses the occupancy of the CA and notifies customers in WA when the CA is vacant. We define session as the time taken to enter the CA, scan and classify the items, and display them on the screen. We use a total of 10 circular polarized antennas in three different orientations, where six antennas face the CA while the remaining four face the WA. The antenna placement and orientations is to address the blind spots. Recent works have improved collision resolution with advanced decoding schemes, mostly using properties of the backscattered signals. Such proposals incur in much elevated complexity and are not suited for a real-time system. We take a different approach and leverage the diversity provided by the simultaneous reception to increase the reading efficiency. While traditional RFID readers also employ multiple antennas, they work only in TDMA mode and cannot exploit the diversity. Let's visualize the benefit of diversity decoding with an example. Let's say in a given time slot, TX1 is a transmitter and illuminates stacks X1 and X2, which both reply. Their signals are received at RX1 with almost the same power, leading to an unresolvable collision at RX1. In traditional readers, RX1 would be the only receiver active, and it would not decode any RN16 and thus result in a waste slot. However, the collision is likely to, to be resolvable using antennas 2 or 4 due to power difference between the two tag replies. By receiving from all antennas, a reader could resolve the collision and successfully acknowledge a tag, and thus increase the reading rate. But how can we assess which antennas have decoded a correct RN16? The problem comes from the lack of error correction mechanisms in RN16 sequences, such as CRC, 
which makes it real hard to differentiate between a corrupted or a truthful sequence. Ideally, we would like to find something similar to the SINR, shown on the top right side of this slide. We see that the SINR offers a stepwise behavior that allows to clearly devise the boundary between a decodable and a non-decodable sequence. Here, PDR denotes packet delivery ratio or the probability of decoding attack. The thing is, the reader can assign roles of desired signal or interference a priori, since all colliding signals are of interest. What we did here is to simply assign the role of desired signal to the sequence with highest received power. This is not desirable, and hence we conclude that metrics such as the SINR can be used. With this in mind, we propose our own metric called interference metric to select the RM16 to acknowledge. The core of the post IM lies in the way the reader decodes the FM0 sequence. The basic FM0 symbol encoding is shown, shown on the right side of the slide. Let's say the, the reader receives uh, <coughs> a response from a tag with SNR of 20 dBs, as shown in the figure. The differential decoding associates similar amplitudes pulses to bit one and zero otherwise. In this example, we observe two clear clusters denoting bits one and zero. Now, if we fold these two clusters around the overall mean, we generate a unique cluster whose variance determines the overall decoding uncertainty. If we repeat this scenario under a lower SNR level, we observe that the two clusters are not that well defined and the variance around the mean becomes larger. Bringing collision into the picture and having two tags collide with 5 dB of SNR, we observe a higher uncertainty in the decoded symbols. The same happens when three tags collide in the slot, leading to an even higher uncertainty. We observe that the ratio of standard deviation over the mean consistently increases as the situation worsens that is, under higher presence of noise or interference. We thus define our interference metric as this ratio. Next, we employ a single antenna reader to empirically characterize the relationship between IM and PDR. The plot on the right shows the average PDR for each measured IM value, resembling the desired behavior with the SINR, shown on the left. The empirical result, results are ratified via simulations. We abstract the empirical result using a sigmoid function shown with a dark line and use this to conform our interference metric policy or IMP. IMP will then select the RN16 with lower IM across all antennas. In this way, IM helps selecting the RN16 to increase the reading rate. What's also important is that IM doesn't incur in extra computation costs as it reuses intermediate metrics during the RN16 decoding stage. And finally, IM computation is parallelized across the receiver chains. The core of the reader is implemented in GNU radio by significantly, significantly extending the coding one. We use a total of four user PX310 equipped with TwinRx and UBX daughter boards for data transmission and reception over the UHF RFID band. The system achieves frequency and time synchronization by means of an octoclock, which connects to every X310 radio. We interface the GNU radio application with an external Raspberry Pi model, acting as a microcontroller to select the active transmitter port in an analog multiplexer. In our GNU radio application, the gate and tag decoder blocks detect and decode the RN16 packets. They also compute the interference metric along with other features such as the RSS. These features are fed into the switch block, which enforces a policy to select the RN16 and confirm the act. The third system component is the tag classifier. We use a convolutional neural network consisting of three fully connected lawyers, layers and train it using supervised learning. The training set consists of soft features such as the RSS and the number of EPC readings per antenna, which are gathered by our custom built reader. We train our model by deploying a large number of tags, both inside and outside of the CA, encompassing a wide variety of positions and orientations as shown on the right hand side figure. Next, we present the evaluation of RFGO. We first seek to assess how the proposed IMP achieves higher reading efficiency. We configure the GNU radio switch block with IMP and two other basic policies, fixed policy or FP, which only activates one receiver antenna, and majority voting policy or MVP, which acknowledges the most repeated RN16 sequence across the receiver antennas. We leave out any illumination issues by only activating one by only activating one transmitter antenna and ensuring all tags are decodable. The figure shows the PDR obtained for every policy and tag set cardinality. 
We plot the slaughter along a model as a performance lower bound as it assumes that tax are only decodable when there's no collision. We see that the fixed policy outperforms the slaughter along a model since some collisions are indeed resolvable. As expected, the improvement of MVP over FP shows that the majority-based decoding often leads to a correct RN16 sequence. However, IMP greatly outperforms MVP thanks to its ability to assess the correctness of RN16 sequences. This helps rising the reading rate from 52% or 62% for FP and MVP to 77%. We derive a theoretical model for IMP, MVP, and FP, which are evaluated and plotted in dark lines in the figure. The analysis well matches the experimental result. We seek now to understand the impact of the number of an receive antennas in our set. By increasing the number of receivers from one to six, while keeping only one transmitter active, we measure the average PDR from multiple rounds. The results show a sharp increase of PDR from one to four antennas with a flatter improvement afterwards. Nevertheless, the reading rate goes from 50% to 73% when increasing the number of receive antennas from one to six, showing the benefit of simultaneous, simultaneous multi-antenna reception. Next, we wish to evaluate how the proposed multi-antenna framework helps achieving a faster reading process. We define the discovery rate as the percentage of the unique EPC that have been decoded per unit of time. We first observed that having multiple transmitters help dealing with the blind spots, thus allowing for a better and faster discovery, but still consider low speed as it requires four seconds to discover all the tags. After equipping our go with six receive antennas, we observe full discovery under one second for a set of 64 tags. We turn our attention now towards the classification accuracy, defined as the ability to read all the tags and only the tags from this user currently checking out. First, we measure the region outside the CA in which tags are read by the reader. We refer to this as the original spillover region. For that, we use a unified cube shown on the top left figure, which contains tags in multiple orientations. The result is shown on the left-hand side figure, revealing that the spillover spans up to 54 inches far from the CA. To reduce the spillover, we use the features from inside antennas only and show the result in the middle figure. Due to multipath effect, the reader still picks up on the tags outside the CA, though considerably reducing the spillover region. And finally, we use the features from both inside and outside antennas using the presented model. The result shows a reduced spillover down to only six inches from the CA. This latter result defines the guard area in RFGO. Next, we aim to evaluate the checkout accuracy of RFGO emulating a realistic in-store deployment. The performance of a binary classifier, like our classifier, is defined in terms of precision and recall. In simple terms, the system has high precision if it does not classify an outside tag as inside the customer's car and it has high recall if it detects all the items inside the customer's car. We require a volunteer customer holding a basket full of items in the CA with the items arranged in an horizontal, vertical, and random manner. The surrounding area is filled with 832 tags representing available items that are placed in the store shelves. After multiple runs of checkout, RFGO returns metrics of 99.79% and 0.77% for recall and precision. We also measure the accuracy while having other customers lining up on the WA, each, each of them holding a bag with items in random positions. In this scenario, RFGO reports also similar accuracy. To conclude, we have presented RFGO, a first of its kind self-checkout system based on RFID. RFGO enhances customer experience with its effortless, open, and unrestricted design, being the, being the first one to encompass all of them. The multi-antenna framework increases the reading rate from 50% to 77%, and the supervised learning classifier achieves high accuracy, leading to over 99% precision and recall. Therefore, we have demonstrated how RFGO provides customers with a fast, reliable, and effortless checkout experience with the maturity required for practical deployments. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to your questions on Mobicon.